the Bible says, O oh my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee. Psalm 16, verse 2. In this precious verse, the Holy Spirit teaches us through David that our goodness cannot save us. Fallen men, try as they might, they cannot merit justification before God, not in part, nor in whole. Left to ourselves, we are incapable of reaching salvation, for our best works are filthy rags. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4 And our arms are simply too short to save. The Bible says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 God also tells us that Scripture hath concluded all under sin in Galatians chapter 3 verse 33. The Bible goes on to teach us that God will by no means clear the guilty in Exodus chapter 34 verse 7. So if we are left to ourselves, we would all certainly be doomed. However, praise be to our God the Bible also tells us the following about Jehovah. The Bible says, The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. It is Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 through 7. You see, God has a way to save his people from their sins. While our arm is too short to save, the Bible assures us that the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. In Isaiah 59 verse 1. So while our goodness extends not to God, listen carefully. The righteousness of Christ alone comes all the way down from heaven and freely covers all of our sins, forgiving us and giving us a title unto eternal life. The Bible says this about the name of Jesus our Savior. It says, This is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. In Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 6. In Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 12, the Bible says the following about the name of Jesus. Listen carefully. The Bible says, Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That our goodness extends not to God is not a problem. Not for God. For our good works are not necessary for salvation. All that is necessary for salvation is the finished work of Christ alone. As Martin Luther said a long time ago, God does not need our good works, but our neighbor does. An old Presbyterian named Matthew Henry, commenting on our lead text, also writes the following. He says, Whatever good there is in us, or is done by us, we must humbly acknowledge that it extends not to God, so that we cannot pretend to merit anything by it. God has no need of our services. Whatever good we do, it is all from Him, so that we are indebted to Him, not He to us. If God be ours, we must, for His sake, extend our goodness to those 
that are his, to the saints in the earth. For what is done to them he is pleased to take as done to himself, having constituted them his receivers. That was said in Matthew Henry's Commentary, Volume 3, page 288. So away with Arminianism and Roman Catholicism and Lordship Salvation and any other heresy that pretends it can use the myth of human free will to reach salvation with its goodness. Our lead text casts down free will, synergism, and justification by faith and works. God powerfully reaches all of his elect with his covenant grace. Though our federal representative Adam failed to keep the law, and we all sinned in him, Christ our surety freely came and kept the covenant of works for us, entirely satisfying the law in our stead with his active and passive obedience, completely obeying the law's requirements and paying all of our debts, while taking the punishment for our transgressions and propitiating God's wrath, taking it upon himself. Having our guilt charged to our surety and mediator, Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father freely imputes the righteousness of Christ alone to us, freely crediting Christ's righteousness, his saving righteousness, to our accounts, declaring us legally just, acquitting us, justly forgiving all of our sins by his grace alone. We give God our thanks that at his predestinated time, the Holy Spirit, through the reading and preaching of the good news, quickened us unto life and created faith in us. So like all the saints before us, we too could believe the gospel and receive Christ's righteousness alone. Amen.